What's up, everyone? Welcome to round two of week four of the Pauper Premier League. I'm here with Brian DeMars, who just served me a stomping in round one. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> yep. So we're up next is uh, Alex and Andreas. <clears throat> uh, Alex has one of the most unique decks uh, on the, the broadcast tonight. This is a deck that I know he's been working on for a few months. Black Green Aristocrats. And then Andreas has the uh, eye rolling boogeyman of the format, which is Bogles. So, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, do you have any uh, initial thoughts? Or? So, the, the trample auras are going to be everything in game one. If Andreas can stick a Rancor, uh, Alex is going to have his work cut out for him. If Andreas sticks an Armadillo Cloak, Alex can literally never win. Like I, I don't think, short of getting a Mortician Beetle up to bigger than the Aurid creature, yeah, I don't think he can beat an Armadillo Cloak game one. Or Feeder. He's got the Feeder as well. He can that card can't block. Beetle can't block. Though. You're right. Yeah. He can't block. Okay, so yep. yeah, just the... Uh, he's got an Antuco Husk. Okay, okay. So he has to get one of his uh, his payoffs bigger than the Aurid up creature to survive yep. an Armadillo Cloak. Agree. Uh, his sideboard is uh, pretty juicy, though. He has three Mesmeric Fiends to check the hand, two Serene Hearts, which is a two-mana instant that destroys all auras, and he has a uh, Slum Reaper, which is the Fleshbag Marauder of the format. It costs four instead of three, but uh, that all of those cards are very good. So I think Andreas is heavily favored game one, and Alex is slightly too moderately favored games two and three. I agree. I think you. I think you nailed it. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Alex's deck is super cool. I streamed this deck a couple months ago when he first wrote his article on Channel Fireball about it, and he was in the chat giving me pointers at the time, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, Mortician Beetle dropping from rare down to common was uh, one of the the more recent juices up to the format we got. He also has three Winding Way in his deck, which is uh, a nice way to refill your hand that the deck did not have when I tried it a couple months ago. That's a new Modern Horizons card. Let's see, Yeah, uh, I've actually played against this deck more than a lot of the decks in the format. This is just like a, there's two guys at my local game store who actually played this deck. So I've seen quite a bit of this deck and I respect it quite a bit. Yeah, all right. You're way ahead of the, the average curve then of knowing what to expect out of the Aristocrats deck. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a nasty one. It, I've, I'm a little bit worried about playing against it myself. So Yeah, it, it is a it is very strong against Stompy. It goes wide and big, and uh Stompy just tries to shove forward with, with one or two creatures. So I think you got your work cut out for you against Alex tonight. It's. It, I think so too. I think the. I think black green is definitely favored by a little bit, but it's it's a fun matchup to play because there's a lot of battle in the matchup. Yeah, it's so. it's going to be like two supercharged draft decks crashing into each other. There's going to be a <laughs> lot of combat, not a lot of tricks coming out of the hand. I mean, you both have a couple instant. You have like eight or ten instants in your deck. He has two, but uh, there's going to be a lot of onboard math and onboard tricks coming out of Alex for sure. Let's take a look at the, so for Astrolabe and the Boggles, yeah, the, if not, looks like it's probably like the next level build. Yeah, um, so I haven't played against this deck in a while, so yeah, I, just, so, I noticed the Astrolabe in there. Right, Boggles is on, it's kind of three different tiers of technology right now. Uh, the, the base level is the old build that counts on uh, abundant growth and Utopia Sprawl for its splash colors. Like, look at the sideboard. There's barely a green and white card to be found. There, there's a lot of red cards, a blue card. Uh, and then, like, you just, you used to have to have one of your land enchantments in play to cast your sideboard cards. Then the next level up is using Astrolabe as a solid way to make sure you can cast your sideboard cards. And then the max level is having the Skyfisher Glint Hawk package in your Bogles deck. 
because then you're drawing cards, you're fixing your mana, and you're insulated against edict effects. That seems nice. That yeah, seems so like nice Andreas right is there. right in the middle there. Not a bad place to be though. Still pushing the you can't target any of my stuff angle real real well. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, he good. doesn't have any uh of the creature that tutors uh in aura. I'm forgetting its name right now, but there there's a, a three mana one two that you does not have hexproof that you can tutor up in aura. He has not chosen to play that card tonight. Heliad Heliad's Pilgrim? Right, Heliad's Pilgrim, that's what it is. Yep. Yep. He is on mono hexproof. Nothing is targetable in this deck. I think he made a really solid choice tonight with uh, Bogles because he just needs a 2-1. And Bogles will steamroll anyone who's not ready for it. And uh, if he thought one person would be ready and he could just get two wins elsewhere. And I'm worried about him. I think... You're probably a little worried about him. You have four gleeful sabotage. Though. I have the four gleeful, so I, yeah. <laughs> Alex I, is the most. Whatever ready deck for him. I play, I'm not giving Bogles a free win. So if you're in my right. pod, I will be ready for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I made some bold sideboard decisions this weekend that did not pan out. I thought that uh, either you or Andreas would be on Tron. Uh, I because I, I believe Tron to be the most powerful deck in the format right now, and you needed a 3-0. I wasn't counting on you, giving your puncher's chance 3-0 to Stompy. So uh, we're just up against... You, you definitely overestimated my ability to play Moto. I can't play Tron. Too many that's, plays. That's reasonable. I also had a Flicker Tron. I was testing it, but I didn't feel perfect with it, and I knew Birdman would be in the booth tonight, who is the king of that deck. So I didn't want to embarrass myself with Birdman in the booth. So I went to the more uh, streamlined deck. All right, sounds All right, like our match is ready. Yep. Let's do it. Wow, that's really tiny. Okay. Uh, so it looks like both one, two, three, four, five, six, both players mulliganed. Alex went to five. So we've got dueling forests and into a Utop utopia sprawl. Right. Andres's hand doesn't really do anything yet. I mean it's ready to pay. It's it's gonna be totally set up when it draws an aura, but it doesn't have one yet. And Alex is gonna start putting monsters into play. So it's currently on Andreas to figure this one out. Here comes the pressure leading off with the uh, with the nest invader. Yeah, we got eight of those in the field tonight. <laughs> Hello, nest invader. Good card. Yeah. It's a one mana two two that enables some shenanigans. Okay, so we got some guys <laughs> in play for uh for boggles. And here come the beats. Yep. So Alex is just going to... Nest Invader 2. They can play the second Nest Invader and another creature this turn. Yeah, so Alex is just going to parade his idiots out there, and Andreas is going to have to draw a way to get bigger than them. And that's going to be the story of game one, one way or the other. In comes the Ledge Walker. <laughs> yeah. One, only one. Oh, winding way. That's going to be hot. Now, is he going to winding way for lands or creatures? I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to put more gonna creatures play into play. All right, <laughs> he's he's proven me wrong. I kind of thought he might do the same thing, but yeah, I I would have added pressure there. So we got another Bogle. Yeah, the. The, the Bogles deck has two types of cards in it, Bogles and Pants. And Andreas is Bogle flooded right now. And... Ooh, a bounce land. All right. Alex has everything he needs to win this game. He just needs Andreas' fail rate to hit, basically. That's what he's playing towards. So we'll probably get a young wolf here. Yeah, okay. and the bounce land. Yeah, so Young Wolf represents 
three extra power in play because carry and feeder can eat it, get bigger, and it comes back as a two-two. Oh no, the Dillo cloak. The race is on, kids. He's get, the Dillo cloak's going to need some help here because he's losing this race. Yeah, he's currently losing the race. That was the the best top deck in the whole deck, though. And an important thing to note about Dillo Cloak is that it does not grant lifelink. It grants text that says when this card deals damage, you gain that much life. So a second Dillo Cloak gives double lifelink. So Omen making a nice play there, sacking the uh, Young Wolf end of turn so that the uh, it would undying into a 2-2. Two -two. So that put an extra point of power onto the board for this right. deck. The Saltai Emissary also manifested as a 2-2 a a two -two as well. So he upgraded three of his 1-1s one -ones into a 3-3 three -three and 2-2-2s. Two -two and then it looks like he doesn't have enough black mana to play all the cards in his hand here. So No, that, that Beetle's definitely coming out, though. And uh, this Vampire is basically lethal here. All right, so, also, so he's got two. Yeah, the, yeah okay. So we're just yeah, going. all right. Alex stole game one. Andreas could not get enough pants on his creatures. So what do you think about uh, sideboarding here? How would you sideboard? And I'm definitely bringing in my Reaper and all my Disenchants. Uh, Alex is reaching for the Fester Creep too. That can kill 1-1s with, or X-1s, even if they have Hexproof. So that's a sweet one. And... Let's see what Andreas wants to do. Uh, he's probably going to bring in his Electricery, I'd imagine. Electricery seems pretty strong. Uh, Lifelink could swing races, but Lifelink needs Trample to connect against this deck with tons of Sacrifice Outlets. Uh, Fling is pretty cool. That could swing a race. I like this green cartouche. That's coming in. And Lifelink. So he's just... He needs the lifelink plan. Right. And he needs as many trample as possible. And, trample. and yep. green cartouche grants trample and kills a creature. That it's a very good card in this matchup. Oh, Andreas boarded a lot less than I thought he would. So he he he's Linny, he knows what his plan is. It's get gain life and gain trample. I like it. Makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Oh, Alex has the Loam Dryad. That's one of the spicier cards that makes this deck work. All right. Boggles off with a uh, with a boggle. It's going to get, things are going to get intense. Yep. The Dillo Cloak is at the ready, but it's the only aura. It's going to come, because Andreas is on the play, he's going to get to cloak up before Fester Creep is active, though. So probably just play the garden, make a... Oh, well, he's debating if he wants a second creature into play or if he wants more mana for next turn. Or he's going to have a second creature, a second Vogel. Yeah, I like draw this your card, first. Your card is, yeah. Yeah, always know what all your options are before you make your play for the turn. That's just good magic. All right, so Young drawing... Yeah, so Young Wolf plus Loam Dryad gets, get to cast another one drop. And then next turn, Alex has roughly a billion mana. Actually four, but that's a lot for, for a deck like this. His whole hand could reasonably be, be in play next turn. I mean, Alex's hand here is just way over the, over the top of what uh, Andreas is presenting here. Right, it's gonna be able to have like a million power in play next turn. Yeah, those two mortician beetles, like they're both coming down right now, and then carrion feeder is gonna make them. What it could make them both five fives if he wants it. It could make them three threes without even while gaining board presence. You notice the, boggles, the two young wolves. Boggles stayed home here too. Yeah, so, I, I think he correctly identified that he has to. Oh, Ancestral Mask. Now he's got a, a battle cruiser. Yes, he does. Now the race is on. Yeah, Alex is going to need a Serene Heart to bust through this. Right. 
does Andreas have an attack? I am not skilled enough in this math. So Andreas would go to 27, Alex to 13. Mortician beetles. Alex can sack just the young wolves to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight power to the board. Yeah, Andreas did this math better than I, faster than I did, and decided to leave his creature home. Yeah, Alex is just going off here. I'm glad he got to showcase the power of this deck in its first outing. Oh, wow, winding way too. More guests. Oh, his deck has more spells in it in post board games than it does. Like it, his deck isn't just lands and creatures. He didn't mill any of his serene hearts though, so he's still, still doing it. And the cool thing is, on offense, armadillo cloak doesn't matter because he can sack the creature before damage. On defense, the attacker has trample, so he's just taking the same amount. But he could work his way around this. Uh oh. The other pro the other problem here for Andreas is that he can just Alex can just block down this boggle. Like he has enough power and toughness that he can just block it. Yeah, down. absolutely. And Andreas is all in on this this one boat here. If the boat sinks, he's dead. He needs a he needs a first strike. Yeah, the ethereal armor would grant another plus five, plus five, and first strike. Did Andreas bring in the fling? Yeah, Andreas did not bring in the fling. He brought in cartouche and two lifelinks, and that's it. Alex is smartly hiding the fester creep too. Like he, if he draws the the reaper. He could deploy Fester Creep, clear out the X1s, and reap the Giant Bogle all on the same turn. All right, there's Fester Creep. No more secrets. We won the first round. <laughs> A third Dillo Cloak. Oh, that's a pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, my. So Andreas can gain 45 life on this attack, even if he loses his creature. And Alex is going to, I think, have to load up on this thing. Yeah. Alex he can't is, race that, so he's got to block it down. Yeah, he's going to take his medicine. He's going to get you know, X for one. Or I guess it's X for five. But uh, he's going to clear yeah. this bogle. Yeah. Oh, just Andreas is just done. Yeah. Wow. I'm impressed. So was, uh, is, yeah, impressive performance there. Yeah, just straight up beat Bogle. It's fair and square. No tranquilities at all. Well, that makes me slightly scared to have to play against it right now. <laughs> yeah, Alex oh, is oh, ready to make these playoffs tonight, and you and I are in his way. Jeez. Okay. All right. I, we'll be back in a minute for round three. <laughs> 